Good evening, everyone. Let's get started. <laughs> and uh, somebody I overheard in the conversation that this is not a match with the face of the face of the photo. So, it looks like it's a little bit of a match, or not? No, no. I'm looking younger. I found the recipe after a lot of time. Yes, finally. So, yes, welcome. And uh, it's pretty evident what we are going to be discussing. I really, really promise you something exceptional and value-driven over the next one and a half hour. So stick around. So much value from your institute only. I've been sending so many people to Harvard, Wharton, Stanford, MIT, and so many universities. This is my 27th year into teaching the GMAT, the GRE, and the CAT. I started teaching this exam and these all three exams in the year 1996. So I'd like to give a bit of backstory of mine before we start and then a spectacular session on the entire journey that you can plan. In this, whether you're in the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, really doesn't matter. We'll do something really, really soul studying in the next one hour. You will go back believing that, yes, I can get into a Harvard or an MIT or a Stanford in the next whatever time that you have, immediately after your undergrad or even later <coughs> if you plan. So let's start. Let's see. So a bit of my backstory, as I was saying. So. I have generally been extremely obsessed about an Ivy League education for people. Obviously, you're sitting in an IIT, so you know the standard of education. But still, when it comes to absolute top-notch global quality education, we all agree that at the graduate studies level, not at undergrad level or school level, at the graduate studies level, the United States is an absolute leader. If you look at the top 500 universities, and this is not just random ranking that our universities have this ranking or that ranking, just like that. Consistently for the last 70 years, the top 170 universities almost, almost all of them have been American and then some Chinese editions, some other edition. It's unfortunate and sad that we have such great institutions of learning in this country. Still, we do not find ourselves in the top 50, top 100 somewhere. So what is it that lacks? I mean, if you say that even there's, look at the number of startups coming out of IIT Delhi, look at this. So we are doing really well as a, as a vibrant entrepreneurial system. What is still lacking, we really have to understand. And why am I obsessed about it? Let's understand just the Columbia University's physics department, not Columbia University overall. Columbia is one of the Ivy League universities. Physics department of Columbia University, till date, has produced 40 Nobel laureates. Did you know this, by the way? Columbia's physics department alone has produced 40 Nobel laureates. India overall hasn't produced even five, probably. If you remove the Peace Prize, forget physics. And two of the guys who got it in physics, they were actually American citizens. They just were Indians. So definitely there is some gap, some lag. If you look at the Wharton School, you have 52% women studying there with 82 nationalities represented. Imagine the learning, forget the classroom learning, outside of the classroom for two years, if you go there for your MBA or any other education, the learning that you can have from 82 nationalities combined, it will far exceed what you can learn in a lifetime otherwise. Because a homogeneous group of people will still be able to give you the values that are pretty homogeneous, but these universities are a very, very different ballgame altogether. Okay, so we, I have been obsessed about it. The reason is when I, when I was growing up, uh, generally, there was some kind of literature in a house coming and that talked about Harvard, 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 Harvard Business Review, this, that. So as I was growing up, I had a very clear dream. I wanted to go to Harvard and that's it. And I had some relatives and some uncles in my family who had done a, an MBA from Harvard and I had heard from other people as well that till 1991, no work experience was required for Harvard. You can direct, the way we have IIMs in India, you can write the CAT, immediately you can join an IIM without any work ex. In 1993, the requirement to go to Harvard changed. And at that time, the internet had not come in the world. I had grown up believing that I would go to Harvard only without work experience. And I had really tailor-made my entire journey, lots of extracurricular, lots of other things. Got an 800 score on the GMAT in the year 1995. But when I applied, I got a rejection letter saying, you don't have work experience. And that was the first time I came to know that it was required because there was no literature, there was no journal. So I was absolutely devastated. My parents were prudent enough to make me write the CAT in the GRE in the year 1995. So I wrote those. I got into IIM Ahmedabad through CAT. 
So because I couldn't make it to Harvard, I joined IIM Ahmedabad in 1996, June. And not because IMA is a bad institution, but because my standard in my mind had been set to go to Harvard and you know, the ACE method and this and that. You dream about something and you really know what happens there. My mind couldn't reconcile to the fact that IIM was good enough. And after 47 days, I dropped out of IIM Ahmedabad. And what do you do now? Like you suddenly don't have a plan. So I said, okay, I sat down, what could I do with my life? Because that was not happening for me. It's not that IMA by itself was a bad institution or, or is a bad institution. To me, that difference just couldn't be reconciled in my mind. So what I did next was, I said, okay, I have cleared these three exams. I cleared the GMAT for, with an 800 score, I had cleared the GRE. At that time, the GRE used to be out of 2400 marks. So I had got 2380. And the CAT, I had cleared IIM Ahmedabad. So I had all the credentials. I started a CAT training institute initially in Ahmedabad itself. And then many people in Ahmedabad were not interested in the CAT. They were interested in GRE and GMAT because they wanted to go abroad. You know, a lot of people in Gujarat, they have this trend of just going to the US for no reason or whatever reason, but that was the case. So soon it turned into a GMAT, GRE and CAT training institute. And since then, I have been obsessed about this because my dream was not just to teach people for the CAT or the GMAT. It was to send people to Ivy League University. And over a period of time, when I started training the GMAT and GRE, a lot of my students used to come and say, why don't you even train us for admissions consulting? Like, why don't you give the second piece of the puzzle as well? Because I had finally not cracked it, I did not have the confidence to guide someone for the second part of the process. So what I did, I actually applied to Harvard, all the three programs that I could apply to. So I'll talk about those. And then once I cleared those, I had no intention of actually doing an MBA afterwards. But because I cleared, I started training people for the second stage as well. So this was uh, this. So if you look at if you look at the GMAT alone, the number of scorers that we've had in the 760 plus category is the highest in the world. 800 out of 800 I've had thrice because the GMAT score expires every five years. And just to test my skills and be rel being relevant, I did this. So I did not join even once. This is the backstory I just gave you. Grew up dreaming about Harvard and nothing else. That is exactly what. And my dream was shattered because of lack of information. <laughs> Imagine in today's world, it looks so ridiculous. It's a click away. In my time, it wasn't. So it is a different world that I'm talking about. Sudden rule change was there, as I said. And news really, really traveled slow. And I was a victim of that in that era. So I took the CAT and the GRE. This is the alternative to me. <coughs> Dropped out, as I said, 47 days. The institute I started in Ahmedabad, I gave it the name Dream Careers. And uh, students wanted me to guide them for stage two, for which I didn't have credentials. I only had a score, but I had not cleared the Second stage, that is actually. So I applied to three different programs. This uh, was MBA 2004 after gaining some work ex. And once again in 2014, there's a program called Harvard Graduate School of Education. In this particular category, I made it. And then the best and the most difficult program to ever get in is this doctoral program in business strategy. This has five seats per year. Harvard MBA has 1,800 <coughs> seats per year. 1,800 seats in MBA and five <coughs> seats in doctoral program and strategy. So this, and now have I had the confidence that I can guide people to the second stage as well. All right. So there was a wound that I carried for some time, inadvertently and unwittingly, even without realizing. It has turned into wisdom. I've trained more than 3 lakh people for the GMAT and the GRE combined. And that's what we want to really discuss very quickly. Let's see. So how do we get in? Now there are, when you are in college, there are two ways to do an MBA and then other programs I'll talk about. One is the traditional route that IIT students have generally taken. Most of the people who've come to me from IIT, they don't do the MBA immediately after their undergrad. They gain some work experience and after three, four years of work experience, usually apply for an MBA program. There's another category that generally IITians haven't exploited so much, but you should because you really shave off a lot of stuff. So these are the things. They're all there in your booklet, so not much time I'll spend. It's very self-explanatory. 
you need the statement of purpose, text, video essays, recommendations, all of this. This is pretty straightforward. You need these. So, and the category I really want to stress about is the deferred MBA program. <coughs> now, what is this? Some people might be knowing about it, but if you do not know, when you are in your final year, you write the GMAT before that any time, in first, second, third, final year, whenever, through the GMAT, you apply to MBA programs, all these programs. You can see Howard's program is called 2 plus 2. 2 plus 2 means two years you have to work, and then two years you will do your MBA, which is a guarantee. So you don't have to rewrite the GMAT, you don't have to reapply, your admission is confirmed, the school says just work for two years, you'll anyway get good placement, just work, any way you want to work, and you are welcome to join the same MBA class as those people with five years, six years, ten years work experience will join. So this is a great addition, and this has been there, and it's very strange that people from SRCC, people from other schools, people from other engineering colleges I've been sending to. But most people from IITs have not come to us also for this program. So this, I think, is a great addition. What, what is the advantage here? One of the advantages, as you will see, <laughs> is that when we have a program like this, and if you are very sure that management is the way to go, it's just the business education is what I want. I've done a technology degree. I may not want another technology degree. If that clarity is there, in that case, anyway, so many people from your institutes, all IITs, go into consulting, investment banking, technology also, but eventually there's STEM MBA and tech MBA, that kind of combination. So you could consider this and it will shave off a lot of your time later on. Because once you get busy with work, applying is a huge hassle, GMAT and then the whole application process. So genuinely a good thing, these are all two year programs and others are also listed in your booklet, you can see. We can also consider a program called Masters in Management. Suppose you say, I don't want to work for two years also. I want to just graduate and next day I want to be in some <coughs> college. So these programs do not need any work ex. These are one year programs and you can get into them through, through the GMAT and you will apply to these programs in August of your final year. That means one year earlier, not in April. So you apply in August and you can get in. These are very prestigious programs, almost equivalent to MBAs. In fact, the students who have joined these programs, some of, them have, some of them have done better than the MBA students in terms of their career. So one year.